so good, so good. What is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel and today I wanted to share with you how to make a Puerto Rican pork shoulder. The Benny or the Puerto Rican pork shoulder is a classic in a Puerto Rican household around the holidays. When I was growing up we didn't do turkey for Thanksgiving. My mom always made the pork shoulder and it has been a classic in our household and now I am carrying on this tradition in my home with my family. I wanted to show you how easy it is because it's really stinking easy. Like it's so easy to do with just a couple of ingredients and the the main thing is slow and slow. This is a tough cut of meat, so you really want to roast it low and slow. So I usually start my temperature around 250 or 300. Don't really recommend going over 350 because you want it to roast low and slow. So it typically takes around five to six hours, but that is gonna vary depending on the temperature setting you choose and the weight of your pork. I have a small pork shoulder today. This one is four and a half pounds. So let's go over the ingredients. So here we have our pork. Pork. I have four teaspoons of salt, so you want a teaspoon per pound. So I have four teaspoons of salt in there. I have two teaspoons of oregano, two teaspoons of cumin, a teaspoon of black pepper. I have three tablespoons of oil and three tablespoons of vinegar. And I have about 12 to 15 cloves of garlic. It was like a large head of garlic. Then I have one packet of sasson. So the first thing you wanna do is get this washed and clean. I have patted it dry and I have it here on my parchment paper. So here you have this lab of fat. You wanna cut this back, but not all the way. Like you wanna cut it back and stop before it is all the way removed. That is gonna help keep the roast juicy. You can also crisp this up if you would like to eat that as well. I personally don't like that part, so I just cut it back and use it as like a self baster to keep the meat juicy. First thing you need to do is cut it back. Then you need to make slits into the meat. So first things first, we need to make our marinade. I'm gonna be using this pilon, also known as a mortar and pestle and please excuse my Spanish. I'm not fluent in Spanish, so please forgive me. But I'm going to use this mortar and pestle and I already have my four teaspoons of salt in there. I like to add the salt first because it's going to grip my garlic when I start to pound my garlic out. It's going to keep them from jumping out. So I've added my garlic to the mortar and pestle with the salt and I'm just going to start getting that mashed up. You wanna get the garlic mashed up as much as possible before you start to add the other ingredients. You could also do this in a blender. This is the way that my mom always did it. So this is just the way that I make it as well. You gotta put in some arm work. Put the muscles in for a minute. Get that garlic really mashed. All right, so this is looking pretty good. I'm gonna bring you guys in and show you what it's looking like. So this is what we are looking like. It's like just mush. Garlic and salt mashed together. Then we're gonna go ahead and add in our spices, which is the oregano, the cumin, and the black pepper. I'm gonna get that mixed up. And now I'm gonna add in my three tablespoons of oil and my three tablespoons of vinegar. It's coming together as a paste now. Mmm, smelling really good. All right, and then the last thing my mom used to do was add in this packet of sasson. This recipe is really easy to do, you guys. It's just all about marinating it. So I'm gonna marinate this overnight, and you can marinate it up to two days in advance. The longer, the better. If you do marinate it over two days, over several days, you wanna flip it so that the juices can run back and forth and be evenly distributed throughout the pork. I'm gonna be roasting this tomorrow, so I'm just gonna have it marinate overnight. All right, so now we're left with this paste. It smells really good. But now comes the fun part. Now we have to work with the meat. When you're cutting back the fat, you just wanna start on the corner and just pull it back. So you just keep Working your way until you get all the way through this. And you just wanna be able to flap it back. You don't wanna cut it all the way completely off. All right, that's looking good for me. So now what you wanna do is just pierce the meat and make slits. All throughout the meat without going completely through. I'm gonna flip it over and get it on the sides. And inside these slits is where you're gonna add the marinade. 
All right, once you have gone through and made your slits, that's when you want to come in with the marinade. So the marinade does have does have that sauce in it, and it can stain your hands if you prefer to use gloves. That's an option as well. It makes your hands a little bit orangey for a little while, but it eventually goes away after you wash your hands a couple of times. I'm going to be using this roasting dish from my pork, so I'm going to go ahead and get it in here so that when I add the marinade, all the juices are already in this pot. And I'm gonna start going in with my marinade. This is what my marinade is looking like. It smells really good. So I'm gonna wear some gloves. All right, then you just wanna massage this in and get it into those slits. Anywhere that you find a slit, put some of this marinade in there. So it's a slit right here. So I'm gonna push this marinade in there. And flip it over. If you find a spot that you think you need another slit, make another slit. You wanna get the meat fully covered with this marinade. Simple ingredients, but it is so good. You could also put some whole gar garlic cloves in these holes. I don't do that. I've seen people do that. I don't, I just do it this way. But that is an option. All right, so that's looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and fold this back over. And then the last thing I do is just sprinkle some adobo on it. Not much, we already added salt, but I do like to add a little bit to it as well. So I'll come through with this adobo. And I sprinkle some on there. Just a sprinkle. Then I'm gonna flip it over. This one is boneless. And I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit on the back. Just a sprinkle, and that's it. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna cover her up and let her marinate overnight. So that is it guys, we have the pork in here. So I'm gonna cover it, gonna set it in my refrigerator and let it marinate overnight. The longer the better, but I'm gonna be roasting mine tomorrow so I'm just gonna let it marinate overnight. So I like to come down around four or five in the morning and take it out of the refrigerator and let it become room temperature. Then I get my oven set to about 250 to 300 and then I get it in there for about four or five hours. You can baste it every hour. And then for the last hour or so, you can crank up the heat. That's how you're gonna get that skin crispy and that's when it's really gonna be, you wanna wait until it's fork tender, okay? So five, don't count on a specific time. Don't think that in five hours it has to be done because it's gonna vary depending on your oven temperature and on the weight of your pork. The key thing you're looking for is for it to be fork tender. If it's not fall apart fork tender, keep it in there for a little bit longer. But this needs to roast low and slow. Don't rush it, okay? This is a really tough cut of meat, and in order for it to get tender, it has to go low and slow, okay? So this is part one of our Puerto Rican style pork shoulder, and I will check back in with you guys in the morning when I get it put in the oven. Good morning, you guys. So the pork has been sitting room temperature for an hour. I got the oven preheated to 250 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and get it put in the oven and I'm gonna slow cook it for five or six hours and I'm gonna be checking it throughout that time, basting it and just keeping an eye on it. The last hour, I'm gonna crank up the heat and I'm gonna keep you posted, all right? So let's get this in the oven. She's been room, coming back to room temperature. She's looking good, she's ready. I'm gonna start at 250 because I wanna go low and slow. I'm not in any type of rush. And we're gonna get this baby in the oven. I'll check back in with you guys in a short. It's been about an hour and a half, so I'm gonna peek in on the pork and see how it's doing. It's smelling good. It's smelling good. Let's see what it's doing. up my glasses. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this spoon to baste it. I can't find my baster, so I'm gonna use this. Mm. 
Oh, she's too too foggy. All right, guys, I'm about to take the pork out of the oven. It's smelling so good in here. Somebody's already been trying to sneak pieces. Ooh. Come in and have a closer look. So this is a small one. This is a, only like um, four pounds. So I'm going to get it taken out of here and I'm going to get it shredded up. And I'm going to show you what that looks like once I have it all shredded up. This is so tender. I can't even pick it up. It's just falling apart. Mmm, this is so yummy. Look how tender this is. It just falls apart. Oh my gosh. Mmm. Tender, tender. I'm gonna have to try me a piece. Oh my gosh. Mmm. So good. So good. Highly encourage you guys to make this recipe. Thanks for hanging out with me and making this pork shoulder. Until next time.